In this video, we're going to focus on how you can create a horizontal scroll bar here while making sure that the, as we scroll, that the Y scales stay in fixed position so we can always see nicely the values. So let's start to look how we can do this. So let's start to look how to create the horizontal scroll bar with a fixed Y scale in Chart.js. So the first thing what we need is we need to go to Chart.js3.com getting started. This specific link you can find as well in the description box. So once you're on here, copy this boiler template and copy this. If you want to understand this code, please watch this video here that explains it all. I'm going to paste that in there. I will cut out this title and put the title in here. Save, refresh. So now we have this and what we're really doing is basically we're going to create two charts. One chart will only show the scale area and the other part of the chart will show basically all the bar values. So let's start to work on that. So I'm going to scroll down here and duplicate this entire chart section here. Copy this. And then what I will do here, just to make sure, we're going to say here chart one, and I will make sure that this is very visible for me. So I'll put these items in there. So then I'll just paste that in there. All right, next what I'll do is I will copy this line here. So we have this line for chart number two as well. So I will not mistaken it. Next, what we're going to do is we're going to put in all these variables or constants that we need to adjust. So we say this, and we can remove all of this excess data here. We only need the values because those are important for us. And what I want to do here, conflict number two, data, we say colon data number two. So we use, we're not allowed to use in a shorthand because we need to write it out fully like this. But here we can use the ES6 shorthand, it's no problem. This my chart will be in my chart number two and ID will be in my chart number two as well. So once we did that, I'm going to put it in, but this is very important. I don't want to put, uh, at least this number two chart will be placed above. And the reason why is because we have to later put them one on the left side, which is the scale that will be the left side and the right side will be the values and the values is basically chart one. So I want to maintain that one. So if I save this and refresh, you can see here we have the differences. Of course, what I want to do next is to change at least or to nest these values within because I need to create positioning for them or the width. So what I'm going to do here, I'm going to say a div. And then we have a class and say, let's say here, this is the column small. Very simple. And of course you can give it any name you want. And let's properly indent those. Next, what I want to do is I want to have another one here, but this one will be the large. This column large and what I want to do as well, and this is very important because the column large will eventually be the scroll effect. But of course, how Chart.js works is it will automatically get the size of the, the div which nested within. And this is very important. So I'm going to say here, this can be the box or the container for that. And the reason why I'm doing this is because this one will be the full width, whatever the size of the chart would be. And the upper one here, the col column large will basically control the box within here and make it scrollable. So this one has a fixed size while this one has more flexible size. Very important to understand this. So if I save this refresh, all right, there we are. Now what I want to do, I want to move this one side by side. So for that, in the chart box, I'm going to say enter. I say here, uh, display flex box. We're going to make flex. So this is very important. This is basic CSS. Now they're side by side. But as you can see here, this is still undesirable. So what I'm going to do here is we say a dot column small, and I'm going to control the size on this one. And you can of course modify this as well. But what I will say here will be the width will be 35 pixels. Should be more than enough, and you can always extend that. But as you can see here now, it starts to become slightly uh, bigger or larger or whatever it is. Uh, sorry, a smaller, but still not really in the proper position. Although it is in front of the other one. So this later on will be at a height, proper height as well. So then what I want to do is for the call large, the column large 
for this column what I want to do is I want to say here there will be a max width this width will be 700 pixels which is exactly same to this here so because we're working with multiple divs so this I'm working make it like this so it will fit within this box and the default should show like this but if we are having more values then we want to make it scrollable so then we're going to say here uh, overflow overflow and an X for horizontal this is the horizontal overflow or basically scrolling on horizontal we say scroll so basically if there will be more so if we're surpassing the max width what we want to do is create a scroll bar so if I save this right now refresh you see nothing happens of course here so finally what we can do is for the box and for the box what we're going to do here is let's give it a proper width uh, well not like that yet we'll do that later on let's say 700 pixels for now and then we say here yeah, height we're going to give this in a fixed height of 500 pixels save refresh all right so there we are so you get now something but you can see we're already having a scroll here and if you might say well how do I fix this because of that here we have 35 pixels well what you could do is just simply this you can say here a, a calculation so calc for calculation now it's say here minus whatever the width would be on this that's 35 pixels if I do this say refresh now we have no more scroll in here it is fixed within here all right so now we have this let's maximize the size of it because I don't like the size here so I'm going to scroll down and for chart one and for chart two we'll do the both the same we're going to say here maintain aspect ratio false comma copy this then what I'm going to do here is for the options here for chart number two maintain aspect ratio false as well so if I do this look what happens it will just maximize its size within the diff it is in this is very important the reason why I nested within if you don't do that it will expand automatically to infinity so we want to avoid that so now we have this here but what I want to remove is look you can see here all these legends we don't need legends in this case you have to make your own legend I have a video for that so don't worry about that you can make your own video for you can make your own legend in HTML but right now you can see here this and this just doesn't work so we're going to make sure that there are no legends in here so we're going to say here after the skills plugins legend and I say here display equals false so very straightforward and what I'm going to do here, copy this, put it up here. Scales, after the scales, you can paste that in there. Save, refresh. All right, so now we remove them. What we need to do next is basically two things. First of all, on chart one, we're going to remove the scale uh, values here, the labels, the ticks, and the tick marks. So let's do that first. So we go to chart one. This is chart one. So we're going to say here in chart one in the scales and we're going to do it on the y scale here so what we want to have let's remove these labels first so the tick labels the comma we're going to say here ticks and we're going to say a display equals false save that refresh there we are so now we've removed one part but you can see we still have these tick marks these tick marks we have to remove them but they are in the grid area and the reason why is because they are part of the grid so we say here uh, draw ticks equals false save refresh now you can see we have no more these tick marks that looks quite nice so the next part what you need to do is we need to do it on chart number two removing basically here down the ticks so we're going to scroll down here to chart number two and to remove that we're going to say here the x scale and let's put the x above the y that is just a bit more neat and structured so we're going to say here we're going to say your ticks and display false next comma same grid and then we're going to say here the draw ticks and then we say false as well save refresh all right, so now we have them removed them, but of course this creates what we call an impact because it will maximize the size here. So what we need to do is we need to push this a little bit up. Luckily, there's a very simple structure for that or option. We're just going to say here, just under the maintain aspect ratio, we're going to say layout and layout, we're going to say padding. 
and the padding will be at the bottom and the padding on the bottom here maybe that will be 10 pixels I'm not sure so let's put a comma save refresh all right so we have to see we are on chart number two um, bottom here what happened why is it not showing we have the layout um, maybe I need a higher amount so let's do 25 let's save that options there we are I guess we just need a bit more space because it is just 10 pixels which is far too few so you can see here we are on 25 but 25 is not good enough let's do 28 there we are and if we look very carefully if I zoom in a bit it is maybe 29 or something like that let's do 30 and see how that works all right 30 is too much 29 if I save that there we are and I guess maybe it's 28.5 although I will not go too specific for now although I'm I am doing it quite much but let's leave it as it is for now and the reason why is I'm going to do some adjustments later on and that will impact it so we have this the next thing is here above what we could do is we could remove the space here uh, well we have to see on that one but I don't recommend that because the scale here has assigned additional space here so the number eight would be seen if you go up here it will clip off that number eight so what would make more sense is to push this one a bit more down so what i'm going to do is basically the same here with the layout but then we're going to go up here and then in here we're not going to say bottom now we're going to say top let's say 10 pixels save that refresh and then I have a feeling that we are very very close to the exact number and that looks quite nice you can see here the lines are quite quite nicely aligned so how do we break this down here now because this here is undesirable so what we're going to do here is we're going to say chart JS or at least this chart in chart JS, which is chart number two will have a very li uh, slim uh, width or a very limited width of basically 35 pixels we have here the width 35 pixels of the column but not of our chart because this here just pushes it to the maximum so what I'm going to do is I'm going to scroll down here we're going to say here on the X scale and uh, sorry that's not the X scale it's on the Y scale we're going to say this scale will have 35 pixels which is basically the assigned area of this so that this everything else will be just disappeared or somewhere behind here I don't know exactly how it works it just uh, narrows it down so that's what we're going to do here so what I'm going to say here on the Y scale say here after fit and then we're going to say column we're going to say CTX we're going to create a callback functionality so we're going to use here a function error expression and then curly braces and let's do here console log and just show you here what does this do if I save this refresh open up developer tab we get here this object here and you can see here the width uh, sorry that's the weight the width is 17 pixels so most likely this point is only 17 pixels uh, probably like this 17 I have no idea how exactly how it's measured but something like that you can see right now I have about 20 pixels so what I want to do is I want to say this width will be not 17 pixels now but 35 covering the full diff where it's in so what I'm going to say here we're going to say ctx dot width and this ctx width will be now new size of 35 and we just put in here 35 save refresh there we are so now we have this we have this nicely and now we have this line here and this line i'm going to fix that and if you look very carefully i do notice that we're maybe sometimes slightly off uh, probably just a milli milli pixel but we'll fix it, figure that out later on so what I want to do now is, well, let's create a scroll bar just to test if this works. So right now we have this here and I'm going up here in our item. We're going to say here our width will be, let's say 1000. Save, refresh. There we are, we have the scroll bar. We can see here this works. But if you look very carefully, you see this bar. And then if we move here, this bar just, or the bar is thicker, which probably is because probably we're just one pixel off or we have too many colors overlapping each other because basically we're drawing multiple bars so what I want to do is I want to make sure that this is clear and if you're wondering what I'm talking about here let me just give it a different color so I'm going to uh, go in here uh, in the ticks here we say here 
border color. Let's make this one of our beautiful colors that we have a red color here. So just so you can see that immediately. Let's save that refresh. All right. So if I have this and you can see I'm moving this, look what's happening. The scroll bar is on this item here. All right. So you can see here it is just side by side on our gray line. And it's basically the border line here, but there's like two lines because we have two skills here. So what I want to do is to, to avoid this. I want to say here, just to draw. Uh, let me just show you that border column, but then I say here, draw border, set this on false, forcing it to be removed. If I refresh this, now we only have one specific thick grayish border. Beautiful. That's absolutely phenomenal. All right. So this works. So let's remove this now. We don't have to use this anymore. That is sold as well. I guess it's pixel perfect. But anyway, so we have this here, but I don't want to make sure, but, and you can see here another issue. We're just overlapping this. And you can see if I hover here, we get this weird item that blocks our labels or ticks. I don't want that as well. So what we're going to do is, well, first of all, fix this and move that one here. So how do we fix that? So to fix, I guess, this item here, it was going to the padding that we have here. All right. But because we have this scroll bar, I want to make sure that we block the scroll or at least Push the scroll bar a bit more down. To do that, all we have to do here is we have to increase the amount of padding. Let's make this instead of uh, 28, I'm going to make it 38. All right. But then I go to chart number one, comma, we'll say here, bottom, and just add up 10 additional pixel points. All right. So now we have this. And then if I scroll, you can see here, at least we're not overlapping anymore the item. And of course, you can control the thick of uh, the amount of items here and you can do even some CSS on this. But anyway, I will not not focus on that. Next, what I do want to focus on because I just cannot stand the imperfection of this pixel here. Most likely it is. It looks like it's very on top, but I am not 100% certain. So I'm going to say here 0 0.6. Let's do it a little bit. All right, 0 0.6 is still a little bit off. What is 0 0.5? correct this or maybe 0 0.45 and I do see here so I'm not 100% certain about it but it is as close as we can get maybe maybe it's 55 all right I'll just ignore that one other item but that's but uh, basically you can play around with it but once you zoom in zoom out it probably will be hard to see or notice it it's very hard to see anyway this is basically what we have but what i want to do now is that i want to make sure that the chart is just always by default 700 minus the formula unless we have more data points so the first week will show but if there's more than one week in that case i want to scroll it so scroll down here we're going to create a function for this and we're going to just build a simple function that will calculate this first of all i'm going to say constant and what i'm going to grab is the constant of the box that is the container of chart number one and that is this one here the uh let's see where's the html that's this one here very important go to grab this and i scroll down say constant box equals and then say here document dot query selector and then we're going to say here, string dot box. All right. So what this truly means is that say search in the HTML document or query means search, search in the HTML document for a selector and a selector is a syntax or a uh, span, basically more span or, uh, or a tag. So search for a span or a tag of, uh, the class name of box. That's basically what we're doing here. It's just pure basic JavaScript. Then what I want to do is I want to make sure that there's a formula for this. So I'm going to say a constant, but what I want to do is I want to measure. And what I mean by measuring is I want to say, I want to know how many bars do we have? So that's what we're going to do here. So we'll say here, uh, labels or bars, bars, bar length, for example. All right. Maybe labels length would be more better, but anyway, it doesn't matter. But what this does is basically this. Basically, I'm going to go into chart number one. That's this one here in the my chart 
And for my chart, I go directly into the data object and then I say labels dot length to get how many bars are available. So I'm going to say here, my chart dot uh, data dot labels dot length. And then we get the number here and that number should be number seven. Save, refresh, open up developer tab. You can see here number seven and you can see this object here. I'm going to remove that object. There's this here. Save, refresh. All right, number seven is the length. So what I'm going to do is if, create a very simple if statement, if bar length surpasses, is longer than or more than number seven. So we have more array items. In that case, what I want to do is I want to say here, the box, and I'm going to give it a CSS dot style dot width will be equal to, let's say 1000 pixels. All right, so I save that, refresh. Now you don't see it, so let's change this to six. If we do six, save, refresh, there we are. Now we have this nice scrollable functionality here. So now what I want to do is the following. I want to make sure that this will be calculated and expand the bars consistently because what we're doing now, this will be a problem if I have more data, oh, not in here, but here above. Let's copy this comma there and put that in here. Save that. We get this, but as we expand more and more, this will get smaller and smaller. And I want to avoid that because after a while you will get probably an unreadable chart, which is not what we want. Comma, paste, there we are. You can see here, now it's fine still, but as we keep on going, it becomes more intense. So what I need to do here is to make it smart enough to understand a formula. So what I'm going to do is following. I'm going to say here first of seven, but I'm going to say here, the width, because the width here is allowed to be as big as possible, because we're going to, have, going to use a scroll bar anyway, so it doesn't matter anymore. So we're going to say here, um, let's say here the chart width, and this will be a constant, and we'll make this a formula. Make sure that this is properly spelled. So what we're going to say here is basically this. We're going to say here by default, it is always 700 pixels. 700 and I say plus and I'm going to grab here the bar length we're going to make a formula of it so for every bar length that we have we say multiply by let's say 30 pixels so we always do additional 30 pixels however the, if we have the first seven we need to remove those so we're going to say here priority the bar length minus seven items so if there's just seven it will always be 700 anyway uh, pixels because then it will not surpass this bar length formula but then we have this one here we can just say here this and then we say multiply by so we want to make sure that this is all correct then we have this then what i want to do is concatenation when i'm going to use an es6 concatenation is template literals we're going to say yeah back back tick back tick you say dollar sign this and then pixels here as concatenation so if i save this refresh you will see here the chart will st maintain the same size and we have a huge huge chart to scroll on all right so that's basically how we can do it are we missing anything else i think we're covering we're fully covered now oh all right i'm we're missing still one more item this will be a problem so let's say here we have not this we have 99 save refresh we have a problem now this is 99 but our scale is not aligning and you can see here now it becomes a problem so how do we solve this item as well so what we're going to do is we're going to grab this data and we want to make sure that the data that chart.js has here will be nicely aligned here so what i'm going to say here uh, my chart i'm going to grab here my chart and the reason why we are allowed to do this is because my chart is loaded first if this is loaded second after chart number two you will have a problem make sure you have the right sequence of of loading but you should know that this is just basic javascript so we have this data dot data sets index zero dot data so all we do is we just uh send the location to my chart to here above data 
data sets index number zero because we only have one data set and then data. So if I save this, now we have this. So if I make this one 1999, save, refresh, there we are. Oh, and there we are. We have another issue. You can see here. To do that, what you could do here is to expand again the width here. Make it 40. Doing that. All right. That looks slightly better. And then probably if you want to make sure that this is all correct, you go up here. Make this 40 and your deduction here of 40 as well. So if you have larger numbers, you need to watch out with that and just play around with that one. But that's very simple. All right. And now we have this beautiful, beautiful scroll bar. So let's go back here, put this back on nine, say refresh. There we are. Let's make this very massive. So I'm going to make this really huge. There we are. Or and one more time, copy all of this. Copy, paste, copy, paste. All right, save, refresh. You can see here the chart is still same in, in width, or at least the bars are still in same width, but we have a huge amount of data to scroll on. And there we are. And that's basically how we can create a fixed scale here on, on the Y side. So the final item, what I would going to recommend you to do is, for example, you want now a legend, a customized legend here above, and you have to customize that by creating a HTML legend that will be the easiest one. For that, if you want to know how to do that, watch this video here. We make a beautiful uh, customized legend here. And you can see here on how to create a HTML legend in Chart.js3. I'm going to recommend you this video as the final part so you have complete completed chart with nice scale and a static uh, uh, legend that will stay on top of our chart as we scroll here so that's very important to to do as well 